All right, I think most everybody's made their way in. There may be a few more coming in, but I appreciate everyone staying today on this, this rainy, rainy Sunday. And as has been said, this is our fifth Sunday format, and then this will continue throughout January. I will say, though, some people have asked, and if the plans are in January, we will have a normal service for our second service. So please be looking forward to attending those. And uh, we will have everyone out by a little bit before 12 o'clock in the month of January. And uh, this devotional today, we're probably looking at about a half hour or so. But appreciate everyone coming back and certainly appreciate the lesson from Rick this morning. And, and this devotional will go along very well with, with what Rick had to say. Because we are at the beginning of a new year, as Rick said in his uh, lesson this morning, and we'll be focusing on our commitment to following Christ. And this morning, well, Gary Stegall will have our first song. Then we'll have a scripture reading by Chris Gunn, followed by a prayer by Lonnie Woodruff. Mike Darnell will have a song, followed by a scripture reading by Byron Rudd. Jared Morgan will then have a song, followed by a scripture reading by Jason Jones. And we'll have a devotional talk by Jason Perry. Invitation song by Jared Morgan and a closing prayer by Van Wood. And after that prayer, we'll be dismissed. In all of our scripture reading, be three different scriptures being read uh, out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, 5, and 6. The readings will come from there, talking about our personal commitment to Christ. I'm going to ask Gary to come forward now, if he would. And let's stand as he's going to be singing when all of God's singers get home. Let's all sing out. Good morning. On this first song, as we sing it, uh, just keep in mind, I'm the guy that leads with the right hand, and if my voice goes, that's okay, just watch the hand. <laughs> and again, just sing out, and if I stop and I'm listening, it's because you're doing such a good job, and I always like to do that, simply because uh, you guys sound great, and it, it's an interesting thing to Think about what God hears from you, and when I'm silent and hear you singing, that kind of lets me know. So again, uh, page 859, when all of God's singers get home. What a song of delight in a city so bright, be wept beneath heaven's fair door. How the ransom will rage, happy songs in his praise, when all of God's singers get home. scripture reading will be Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 6. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called 
with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let us pray together, please. Our glorious Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for all things. We're so thankful for Jesus Christ. We're so thankful for him coming to this earth, dying on the cross in order that we might have salvation. And Father, we know that those who are desiring salvation have been taught in the scriptures how to come into your church. And we're thankful, Father, that you have given us a way to come and be your children in your church. And Father, we pray for this church here at Benton, and we pray, pray for the church universal around the world. We pray, Father, that we may truly keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Father, we're thankful for the love that we have in this congregation for one another. And Father, we are so thankful that we can come together in spirit, in truth, and in love for each other. And we pray, Father, that that will grow in this congregation and that will unite us more each and every day. We're thankful for the one body, Father, and we're thankful for the hope that you have given us through the, calling, through the crucifixion of your Jesus Christ and through our calling through the gospel. And Father, we pray that we may all treasure that and understand that you have called us through the gospel and that we are your children and that we need to be united and that we need to love one another more each day. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. They tried my
I'll be reading from Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or even any of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Our uh, next reading will be going through the uh, uh, armor of God in Ephesians. In heavenly armor will enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. Chapter, or excuse me, verses uh, 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you, may be, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Good morning. I'd like to uh, take just a few minutes and uh, speak about our topic which is commitment to Christ. Appreciate Rick's message this morning, and I uh, had a lot of good thoughts about that uh, as we approach the new year. And uh, just wanted to highlight some different aspects. First of all, on the topic of commitment, I think uh, very few of us need much of a lesson on commitment because there are things in our lives that we are committed to, those things that we care about. And so we can take a lesson from those things that we are naturally committed to uh, and extend those uh, to things that are worthy of our commitment. 
So the first example is for the student, a student who's in class and he is uh, aspiring for a passing grade or an excelling grade so that he can go on to the next level and that he can pursue uh, his next endeavor. He's going to work hard. He's going to value uh, the instruction that he receives in class. He is going to prepare for his upcoming tests. He is going to complete his assignments. And then he's going to rejoice in that grade that he's earned. And so we have an example there from our everyday lives of commitment that we do uh, because of the thing it is that we value. The, uh, the, the person that goes to work so that he can earn a living and provide for his family, he naturally is committed to that. He is going to, to treat that obligation and meet uh, that obligation with uh, the, those things necessary to fulfill uh, his commitments. He, because he knows that if he were to lose that job and lose his income and be unable to provide for his family, that there would be consequences that he wants to, um, he wants to avoid at all costs. So there's natural um, inspiration for that. The next one is raising children. So we all have um, a vested interest in uh, raising our children and raising them in the church. But each parent knows that raising children requires a lot of hard work, right? That there are many times to rejoice and to be happy uh, in your child, but that there are lots of sleepless nights. There are lots of tasks to be done. There's lots of worrying about uh, the rearing of your, of your children. And so raising children is another one of those examples that we know from life what commitment is and we know that what it requires of us. Another example is in sports. So the athlete who prepares, who plans ahead, who trains, who shows up day in, day out and by the sweat of his brow, works hard toward the goal, and then in the end um, can rejoice with his teammates in success. So we know what commitment is. The question is, are we committed to Christ? Have we counted Christ worthy in our lives to be committed to his causes? So commitment to Christ has some things that it requires, but it also has benefits that it produces. It also has uh, uh, benefits, like I said. So things that it requires. It requires us to be intentional. We must prioritize Christ in our life. He must be priority number one. Cannot happen by accident. He cannot fill in the gaps in our life. He must be our reason for everything that we do must be to glorify Christ. We, must, we know that commitment to Christ is going to require effort, that it's not going to come effortlessly, that we are going to need to expend energy, that we are need to going to dedicate resources, that we are going to have to at some times be out of our comfort zone and to... Uh, embrace um, being a little bit uh, uncomfortable at times when it's called for to stand for Christ <clears throat> and to be committed to his causes. It also is going to require from us trust or faith to endure a life surround in, in the world. We are in the world but not of the world, we understand. And at times there are things that uh, cause us concern and trouble us. And God knows, knows that. But he promises us that, uh, that we will be rewarded for our commitment to Christ. So we must trust him and trust him to work in the world 
and work through the actions of the Christian to, for the advancement of the cause of Christ. Some of the things that commitment produces in the life of the Christian is a stronger faith. The longer that we hold fast to our commitment and the more times that we see God giving the increase, making the connections, we become, it becomes uh, more natural for us to place our faith in God and to see, to see him um, produce bountiful fruit uh, in, the, in the works that we are pursuing. It produces a personal relationship with God and it produces an opportunity to see God blessing others. So there are advantages, there are benefits to be reaped from our commitment to Christ. So we have examples of how to be committed. If we look in the Bible, we have some giants of faith. If we look in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, you got the uh, Faith Hall of Fame there that lists uh, all of the giants of faith throughout the Old Testament. And then as we come to the New Testament, we have some favorites that we look at. We look at Paul, and we look at how he overcame his history as a Jew who um, persecuted the Christians and gave his life to Christ when confronted with the truth of Christ and dedicated the remainder of his life to carrying out the cause of Christ in the face of every form of hardship imaginable, to be beaten and stoned, to face death, to be shipwrecked, every, every form of harsh treatment at that time that you can even imagine Paul was subject to, all for the cause of Christ. He had companions along the way, Silas and Barnabas, those who worked for the cause of Christ. But there are also a few who we can relate to a little bit more because of those things that might would have hindered them had they not been so committed to Christ. Timothy was a, a young man, a young preacher. And we know Paul's special relationship with Timothy is he uh, encouraged Timothy in the truth and in Christ, in spreading the gospel. But Timothy had to overcome his youthful inexperience and his, um, that would be perceived by his, by his audience and those that he preached Christ to. And Paul encouraged Timothy uh, despite that because he knew of his potential and the good works that God had in store for him to do. So we might find ourselves in a similar position to Timothy, that we feel youthful or inexperienced or our knowledge seems like it might not be uh, to the extent of others, but that we know that we are encouraged wherever our stage is in life to use whatever tools that we have for the cause of Christ. Another example is Cornelius. Cornelius found himself... Um, as a Gentile, surrounded by Gentiles in a pagan world. But yet, he offered up alms to God, and God accepted those. They were pleasing to him. And because of that, he received the gospel. It was, um, God ordained it that he would receive the gospel, and he did, and he was the first Gentile to be baptized into Christ. So we can find ourselves at times surrounded by other people, surrounded by people or in situations that don't seem godly and we look around and we ask, where is God in this situation? And oftentimes the answer is, it's in our very selves, that we are there for a purpose, to be God's messengers to those about us. Another one uh, that we can look in scripture is Lydia. Lydia found herself in a man's world, far more so than today. She found herself 
in a time where a woman's opinion and what she said was considered of little value by most of society. But Lydia responded to the preaching of the gospel and uh, was the very first convert to Christianity uh, in Macedonia. And because of her acceptance of the gospel and then bringing her family to uh, the truth of Christ, she has a, uh, a, a lineage and she has, um, her story is one of spreading the gospel despite, again, her circumstances. So each one of these takes a commitment to Christ that goes, um, that includes a few aspects that I'd like to, to uh, talk about. The first one is a commitment of our attitude. So if there's nothing else in this world that we can control, the one thing that we can control is our attitude. So our attitude can shape how we approach life and how we approach our fellow man. Are we patient? Do we extend grace to others? Do we allow our ego to get in the way of our pride? Have we sacrificed those things so that we can be a better instrument of God? If we can control little else, we can always control our attitude. And so one way that we can show commitment to Christ is through our attitude. Our opinions, do we harbor our own opinions and say that somehow we can keep our opinions to ourselves, and that they are not something that we should give over to God? But in fact, we know that opinions, that if we don't change our heart, Jesus tells us that our actions will reflect our opinions and our attitude. Do we tame our tongue as James instructs us? Do we have good control of the things that we say, knowing the impact that they have on others? How do we spend our time? Our time is perhaps our most valuable resource. Do we commit time to read God's word? Do we commit to be in assembly with the saints uh, for worship? Do we commit our time to the work of the church? Do we help out when help is needed? Do we reach out to those who are in need? Do we call and make visits, take food, and support those who are going through difficult times? These are some of the aspects of the things that we can consider as we approach this new year for our commitment. It begins in the heart. But there are steps that we must take to see it through to fulfillment. Just like those examples in life that we approach, we would never, as an athlete, think that we could become the champion if we only did half the job. So as we commit ourselves to Christ, let's commit our hearts, our attitude, our time, our resources and let us lean on one another and help each each one to increase our commitment mutually uh, so that we can all see the benefits of God working in our lives and in the church so if we need if anyone is here today who needs to renew their commitment to Christ in this coming year or this morning or if there's anyone who has not been baptized into Christ and wishes to do so now, I would uh, extend the invitation of Christ at this time. Won't you come?
us in the closing prayer. I'd just like to thank the men that uh, participated today and I'd like to thank those who stayed for this. And remember, we will be doing this through the month of January. It will be a normal service. I failed to announce that down at the uh, youth rally in Huntsville, Alabama, we had 52 people down there. So 52 there. So that was a good turnout for that. Thank you.